All right, time to start bending some pipe. The moment of truth. We want as little bit of waste as possible. Thank goodness I have a level garage floor for the most part, both directions, long and wide, for this particular project. I've just taken a carpenter's chalk line. Go back in the house. Go on. I don't want her getting chalk on her feet and getting it on the furniture and whatnot. Um, go on. Hmm. She's so good. She just wants to come out and help me out. I know she would. So it's really been a challenge to uh, come up with this idea and how to do it. On my last build with this same design that I'm doing, I use the car. I could just go over here, I could hold a piece of angle iron up, both pieces, clamp it, and I'd lay it on the floor, bend it, and I had my dimensions, but this this way is I'm having to do a little bit more thinking. So what I've done is uh basically used uh just uh welder's chalk a chalk pencil here you know it uh it all erases nice big sheet of paper my erase board and that's another reason i don't want the dock out here so basically all you do is make a line does doesn't matter which way it is as long as you got enough room for your project and the surface is level so you make your first line then I laid down my carpenter's square and I measured over. I had my torsion bar assembly down here on the floor. That's been up and down so many times. It's crazy. And this won't be exact. You can see how my welds turned out on this. The rest of this is just factory spot welded, but let's stay on topic. Basically, this is going to be where my axles are, my wheelbase. I kind of moved the other car to just keep it a little straighter in my head. Here's my mock-up transmission case. So everything is a relaxed fit and fits into its place. I think that's important. So here's my torsion arm. I'm going to attach my frame rails right to this. I'm not going to run a piece of tubing across. There is going to be part of the frame horn protruding down. I'm trying to save pipe as well as weight. So both things are a challenge, let me tell you. Um, I think I want to make sure that these seats fit in there and these things are big and heavy but comfortable. And I've also got these little cheesy fiberglass seats. And you know, if you're just going out for an hour or whatever, it depends on how fast you're going, how rough it is, but you know, you can you can definitely uh, enjoy yourself with uh, those seats, and I have them. So the kick, I'm moving out. This one's at 24 inches, and you can see where these seats and seat mounts, this is a crazy setup, but that's the way the other person did it, and it worked out fine for them, and these seats were in it. I added these uh, bottom braces. They had the most cobbled up thing and only three bolts in them. You couldn't get to things. Ah, it was something else. But I'm going to have expanded metal for my floor so that I can see through it and all the sand falls out. All you need is some place to rest your feet. I don't see the sense of having a solid metal floor. This is going to be more of a specialized sand car. And with this type of floor, all you have to do is 
put something on top of it or on the bottom of it. You can attach aluminum uh, or just throw down some canvas or carpet or whatever. I'm not. I'm, I know what I want. And it's going to be a special, very specialized car. Um, if I was willing to compromise, I'd be satisfied just having this car. But this car does not do everything that I want. And I'm trying to use up parts that I already have. And I want to make something that's real easy to put transmissions in and out. So that I can test the 18 transmissions I have sitting around here. Um... Yeah, it's going to have about a 5 degree kick at 30 inches out instead of uh, 24 like they did on that one. Actually, it looks like they kicked it in and out. But all, all you're really concerned about is that your tires don't rub up against the frame when you're at a full turn. And this is going to be a light duty car. That's for sure. So... I have myself a sketch. I know the person that, still know the person that bought my other car. And he kind of drew some dimensions. And I'm changing them. I'm kind of compiling what I have sitting here, here, and here. And 35 years of doing this stuff. And your comfort and your ideas just change so we're not changing a lot but I'm telling you ergonomics and the way a car feels this uh, upper rail here it's nice to have something to rest your arm on and there's just too much stuff here to start cutting it up and I've talked about that before it's just so many holes and patches and grinding and things to do ah, it Okay, coping or tube notching, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to show you a little trick the way I do it. I suffer with the first piece here. I spent a lot of time getting this where I wanted it so that I would have a nice, tight weld surface and not, not have to be doing all this gap welding, okay? Now, that's for that side and you flip it over and it should fit on this side as well so it's kind of a compound handmade mess of curves I can see where that sides a little odd but nonetheless if I can attach it I have a better a chance if I'm making contact all the way around and put a little bevel on the edge of the final piece of having a pretty weld and a good solid weld <clears throat> so what I do is I get some of this cheesy aluminum roof flashing I find that stuff so handy for so many different things and I cut the end square and I cut it the diameter of the tube let me put my hose clamp on there and I'll... <laughs> Tough doing this one-handed here. Okay, I hope you can see this clearly. Um, what I've done is take that piece of aluminum, wrapped it around, clamped it with a couple of hose clamps. I'm going to use the seam, the weld seam, in the tubing as a guide and I'm going to put the edge I'll even it's just a little bit off and that's okay that's okay so I'll make a mark where that's got to line up and then I'm going to go around the inside and that's where I have to cut This is just for my pattern. Okay. So when I get done, it's going to look like this. And I'm just going to use a pair.
pair of kitchen scissors to cut this aluminum. It cuts real easy. This particular one was from a uh, windshield roll bar, if you will. And what you do is you write on it which side this is going to be. So you can see there was my mark for the weld seam and this was the right side. So what you want to do then to transfer this over, put your weld seam mark on this side and wrap it the opposite way for the left side of the car or the right side of the car, however you want to do it. But this way you get your coat pattern and you can make it for the left and the right and I just this piece doesn't matter and the price of DOM tubing nowadays um, I, I wouldn't this was in my scrap bucket I don't know where it came from I wouldn't have cut this off uh, so now let's take this all off of here That's my that's my coat pattern. Then let's take my old man shaky hands and uh, try to cut that out. And then well, I'll, I'll use this as a pattern and I'll draw it with my marker on the real piece of pipe. This works especially nice um, if you've got something that's real close and you don't have fancy tools and you're just trying to get that perfect fit to the frame rail or the tube wherever wherever you want. Um, there you go. And so one side's the right and one side's going to be the left and then you can you can keep these for another project or share it with somebody but that's how I do it and I got a piece six foot six and a half feet long so that's what we're doing now I'm now I'm gonna put this on the real deal put my cut mark on the weld. Boy, that's dirty. And then I'll just wrap this around. I get my ends flush. Could damn near do it probably without clamping. But I think I will clamp it. Now I'll draw it on the pipe and then I can grind away you can use whole sauce you use what you have and you use your ingenuity that's that's what you do who was it uh, mother of invention she must have been a cheap old broad. <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention I don't think that's true I think it was a cheap ass because the mother of adventure. <laughs> I take my marker. And I'm going to transfer this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some people seem to have forgotten. All this used to be done with hand tools. You know? Cross out. This will be the left side. Left. Yeah, because I got a big bump to go over there. 
Okay, so this is the left side, and the, I flip it around, it'll be the right side. There you go. Now I gotta get to grinding. Gosh, that takes a long time. Okay, it's been more than a few days later. I've got this secured. I'm using this Unistrut and some conduit clips for this inch and a half pipe. I got my five degree bend here coming up to my front end. And at some point, we're gonna have to do some welding. But one of the things I need to do is make my main hoop. And I do have some drawings, but it doesn't give me the, the bend detail that I need to get this thing exact. So, I bought this damaged piece of 3 8 plywood at Home Depot for 70% off. And it's the other side of this corner and some of the strap damage on the edges. And that is here and there. So what I did as I find the center of this piece of plywood and then I go to the left and I go to the right and I I use the dimension of that rail the two rails I want it to end on one side on center and end on the other then I need elbow room for my seat so and I know that I want the elbow height to be 15 inches so I make a line at 15 inches up on both sides kind of like X marks the spot and that is where it kicks in and I know I want the curve on top that's almost a 90 it's like 85 degrees is what it comes out according to this uh, protractor right here and this is this is another like five degrees which uh, is kind of interesting. So, then I've taken my bender, taken the bending shoe off, and used that as my radius, and made some lines here, and find center, the distance from here to here, and here to here, find that center, and then I'm going to have to set my shoe up when I actually do the bend. And that'll be in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. Everybody please be safe. Hope we have a good year coming up here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.